Welcome to Smart Catalyst. Today we are going to see the news dated 24th October 2018. Today we are going to see these topics for prelims and some topics for mains. The first article is MS Swaminathan to be awarded World Agriculture Prize. As we all know, MS Swaminathan is profoundly referred as the father of green revolution. So, this is awarded by the Indian Council of Food and Agriculture in New Delhi on Friday. For prelims, we have to know some facts about MS Swaminathan. He is the well-known Indian geneticist and international administrator. He has been awarded some more awards by the Indian government. Uh, in the Time magazine, he has been placed in the Time 20 list of most influential Asian people of the 20th century. So, this has to be noted for the prelims perspective. And uh, some more awards has also been given to uh, MS Swaminathan, say Padma Vibhushan, which is the second highest uh, civilian award granted by the Indian government. And some more awards like the Ramsan Magsasay Award, Albert Einstein World Award of Science and World Food Prize. Here we have to also note some of the facts about the Indian Council of Food and Agriculture and this organization has been started only in 2015. It has its vision and mission which focuses on the food research and development and this body is an uh, think tank uh, which is so which is not under any government or mi government ministry. Now we are going to see some of the places which have been appeared in today's news. The first one, this news is, has been lifted from the Hindu. This news is related to the migration from the Central America towards uh, US via Mexico. Here we have to note the places for the prelims perspective. And uh, the first is the Guatemala and the second one is the Honduras and El Salvador. So from these places, migrants have been moving towards US via Mexico. And uh, if you see this place is uh, found in the uh, Central America and it connects with the Isthmus of Panama. As you all know, Isthmus, Isthmus of Panama is nothing but the a small landmass which connects two continents that is the North America and the South America. And uh, you have to see the seas located here is the Caribbean Sea and these are the Caribbean islands and here it is the Pacific Ocean. So, in this picture we can clearly see the Caribbean islands in the Caribbean Sea and it is the greater Pacific Ocean on the left hand side. Uh, for prelims, map questions are regularly being asked, so it is important to note this also. Okay, now we are going to see the one more place which is news which is present in the Hindu newspaper, and uh, this news is about that U.S. ships are under the shadow of the Chinese Navy while moving or while navigating through this Taiwan Strait, and this Taiwan Strait is located between the mainland China and Taiwan. As you all know, that China has a one China policy which includes China under its fold. So, security of the Taiwan Strait is under a matter of concern. Uh, and if you see in this map, you can see the parcel Paracel Islands, Scarborough Shoal, and the Spratly Islands. So, these are the islands which are under spade between Chinese mainland and uh, some of the neighboring countries like Philippines and uh, Vietnam. So, uh, this South China Sea is the stage for uh, uh, world power politics and uh, US concerned uh, Asia pivot policy is also focusing on this China, South China Sea. It is also essential for the Indian security. And now one more news which is potentially can be asked in geographical map question is this which has been taken from the mint and the news is about uh, India, Iran and Afghanistan government officials have met in Tehran to talk about this Chabahar uh, construction activities. Uh, so, as you all know, this Chabahar is counter to Chinese Gwadar port construction in Pakistan. So, this Chabahar is the gateway to the uh, Central Asia and Afghanistan uh, for development and trade activities. Uh, this Chabahar port uh, agreement has been dated back to, to 2003, but its construction activities has only started in 2014. Uh, now, it has been uh, revamped for further developments. So, here some of the facts you have to know is that Chabahar port to be developed by India. This is the package. So, uh, via this Chabahar port, we circumvent the mainland of Pakistan to trade with Afghanistan. So, thereby the trade will grow and then ke chemical and petrochemical steel sectors will have an impetus and fertilizer imports will get cheaper and easier availability of minerals from the Pakistan. So, easier availability of minerals from the Afghanistan through this Chabahar port via this Indian Ocean region and it is just 550 nautical miles from the Indian 
coastline and now we are going to see the next article which is the opening up of the world's longest sea bridge by chinese president xi jinping and uh, this sea bridge is about 55 km connecting the chinese mainland of uh, zuhai and makua with the hong kong so in the middle you can see a tunnel which connects this bridge uh, this tunnel is of length of 7 km and a depth of 44.5 meter this tunnel has been constructed uh, over an artificial island which also uh, receives the river delta and uh, this is of uh, ecological concern because uh, it this region is famous for the dolphins which are considered to be the endangered species according to IUCN and so this is the criticism of this project next article is related to the cracking down on crackers which has been ruled by the supreme court uh, yesterday and uh, a central government affidavit has also been filed against this the what are the judgment specifications we are going to see now according to the prelims perspective so the specifications present in the judgment includes uh, we have to see for the high content of unburnt and partially combusted material uh, which is having a poor quality of raw material should be uh, avoided and uh, this will be checked by the petroleum and explosive safety organization and to abide by its specifications now we are going to see some of the points related to this petroleum and explosive safety organizations in your next slide and uh, it is a statutory authority and interested with the responsibility under the explosives act of 1884 this is com this also includes the petroleum act of 1934 and the inflammable substance act of 1952 and environment protection act 1986 and just you note that it is it is a statutory authority the second specification is that use of reduced emission firecrackers. So you, you can see that to cut the particulate matter by 15 to 20 percentage and thereby reduce the air pollution causing through this cracking firecrackers. And the use of charcoal meeting specifications of the same piso. Uh, and the third specification is that use of the green crackers that is the same which is the particulate matter reduction by 30 to 35 percentage and a significant reduction in the NOx that is oxides of uh, nitrogen and oxides of sulfur because as you all know the, the oxides of nitrogen and sulfur are the potent greenhouse gases so uh, usage of green cracker should be promoted and uh, uh, piso will also ensure that test and check for the presence of the banned chemicals like lithium arsenic antimony lead and mercury so these uh, five chemicals should be noted for the prelims perspective as UPAC can twist in this the chemical names adding to this the crackers uh, sound level will also be considerably uh, kept under limit uh, the sixth specification is ban of the barium salts so this barium salts is used in the manufacturing of firecrackers to produce the green light and other light based uh, crackers like the flower pots sparklers etc it is also considered as a hazardous gas uh, because it emits the poisonous gas and causing respiratory problems and other health complications according to the supreme court and now we are going to see the next article for the prelims that is the global food marketplace which has been organized by Cial in Paris and before this I would like to mention you about the event organized last year in India that is the India International Food Exhibition. And uh, this India International Food Expo is also uh, uh, organized by Government of India in collaboration with the CL that is the Salon International D Alimentation. And uh, this global food marketplace is organized in Paris which is exhibition of food service products uh, with more than 7020 French and international exhibitors from 109 countries. And this is a biennial event and in this event 45 Indian companies have also participated. Uh, some of the benefits of this uh, marketplace is that the, to explore the business opportunities for trade, acquaint with new customer trends, food innovations and get good inquiries from the buyers. Now the next article we are going to see for the prelims is this May Nahi Hum app which has been launched by our Prime Minister and this is app uh, themed with self for society and it is a technology using for the social causes. So uh, it is a confluence of the IT professionals and organizations and uh, towards to work towards the social causes and the service to society with the help of the technological innovations. 
with this uh, we are uh, going to serve the weaker sections of the society by leveraging the benefits of the technology and now the first article for mains is this india and the new phase of globalization and in this article we are going to see about the evolution of the globalization and the role of the fourth industrial revolution and how it uh, and what are the implications for the india so now for this we are going to see first the evolution of the globalization in a time span and now the evolution of globalization starts with the industrial revolution in the late 18th and 19th centuries and uh, this uh, has started with uh, craft production and over a period of time it led to the mass production through the invention of the machines and other technologies and this led to the mass customization which means that uh, as the ma pro production increases this led to the uh, need for the satisfying the customer demands so for which the customization has to be done through some marketing procedures uh, so this mass customization has led to the phase of the globalization especially in the 21st century this has brought in the heterogeneity in the society through regionalization personalized production and various other forms at the same time of this globalization evolution there are also considerable changes in the global trade flows and capital flows and uh, this is due to mainly due to the technological innovations so technology can be taken as a main agent of social change so this is also further aided by the fourth industrial revolution which talks about the disruptive technologies like uh, artificial intelligence robotics nanotechnology and biotechnology so now you can see that the trade in services are increasing at a faster pace compared to the trade in goods if you see after globalization india's transition from the primary sector to the tertiary sector without having any robust growth in the secondary sector has led to the premature deindustrialization so basing this as india has been spearheaded by the exports of the modern services like software technologies and in pharmaceuticals research and other financial services and in this article the author relates the role of migration with the trade flows and its impact on the indian economy you can see that the global international migration has not increased but instead remains steady at about only 3 percentage for many decades now we are going to see the effects of globalization in various domains the first is the social dimension uh, in education and inequality in education after globalization there is improving western scientific education spreading among the masses that helps to reduce the inequality and but also on the other side the inequality is considerably increasing because uh, there is a little focus of early childhood learning so it is the need of the our this indian government has to take some initiatives apart from universalization of education to universalization of the childhood learning apart from this the globalization efforts have been considerably seen only in the urban areas and uh, left out in the rural areas uh, so this is also affecting the rural childhood developments 
the second aspect is related to the health and the nutrition after many scientific researches coming in the food technology the dietary habits have been changed considerably and this helps to increase the nutritional requirements of the india's demographic dividend uh, there is also other cons related to this health and nutrition is that mcdonaldization of uh, through this globalization the next aspect we are going to see is about the skill development and it india's demographic dividend and uh, how globalization has effectively played a role in these domains uh, is that skill development after coming of the western scientific education skills have been improved a lot through this globalization and uh, india's demographic dividend has also considerably gained but also on the other side the skill development has a skewed distribution among the india's demographic population and next aspect is the globalization of ideas via the technological innovations like internet and social media. With these ideas, the skill development can be increased. This can be utilized properly for, the, for getting the rich dividends from the demographic population. The next aspect we are going to see the globalization in technological dimension as we all know the globalization has led to the rise of technology and this technology have also helped in the rise of globalization but to harvest the fullest potential of the globalization there should be proper distribution of technology among the masses but there is a considerable digital divide among the masses which means that the skewed distribution and this should be addressed through some policies and the next aspect is that due to the technological innovation uh, it has attracted the global investors to invest on the solar power waste management and affordable housing through this globalization so from these aspects we can come to a conclusion that data and information technology are regarded as the new life blood of the global economy now we are going to see about the economic perspective regarding this globalization as we have already seen that globalization has led to the uh, technological innovations this technology can be implemented in the infrastructural developments now uh, indian government is also considerably uh, utilizing this ppp model that is the public private partnership model in the infrastructure developments of the country the second thing is the remittances and trade uh, if you see the wto's mode 4 says about the free movement of the services so through this mode 4 clause of wto many people are migrating to other countries uh, and uh, serving in the service sector of those countries and remitting some foreign currencies to the indian market and uh, through this the remittances are considerably increasing in the indian economy and uh, also at the same time the trade flows are also increasing widely so in order to utilize the advantages from these remittances the indian government should focus on issuing the nri bonds especially from the countries with which it has the double taxing avoidance agreement also through this globalization various global investor on investing the welfare development schemes of the country in order to harness the benefits of the globalization uh, india should focus on new policy instruments uh, to attract the more long term capital inflows which should be invested in the india's human and physical infrastructure now the next article is about the investment cycle and in this article we are going to see about the trends of the indian investment cycle in indian economy and uh, this article has been taken from the paper mint it can be potentially asked in economics paper 3 and now has the investment cycle has turned or not there are some convincing signs like uh, momentum in cement demand steel demand and import of capital goods but are also there are some weak signals like the corporate deleveraging now the current trend is there is much of the fresh investment only concentrated in expanding the existing production facilities rather than focusing on the greenfield projects 
Adding to this, the burden of the delayed projects continues to weigh on the investment cycles also. Now, to analyze this investment cycle trend, we have to focus on the capacity utilization. What is this capacity utilization is that uh, the proper utilization of the resources for the production efficiently. At present, the capacity utilization is 5 year high and above the long term average. This can be potentially utilized to improve the investment cycles. At the same time, we could also see there is a higher consumer demand in the market. If the capacity shrinks, so how to sa satisfy the consumer demand is a question mark. So in order to avoid further economic imbalances, the higher consumer demand should be responded by the supply side. If this is not considerably addressed, it will lead to increase in the imports. There are some concerns in the investment cycle trend. They are the typical Indian investment cycle wherein which we can see there are longer downturns in the investment patterns. It is also important to empirically distinguish the cyclical and the structural components present in the investment downturns. This itself will address a half of the problem. The next point is the ongoing investment revival will not take gross domestic capital formation to the highs as we expect. There are also some supply chain problems after especially after the twin shocks of demonetization and the GST. So we have to consider the factors that influence the Indian investment cycle trend. The first one is the real interest rate, capacity utilization, availability of bank credit, global growth, pool of domestic financial savings and the fiscal deficit. At present, these factors are showing good signs uh, to change in the investment cycle trends in the sense that capital spending by the companies have improved a lot, the capacity utilization have also improved and the non-food bank credit has also recovered and the global economy is also doing well. Also the financial savings and the fiscal deficit show some positive signs. So to, in order to improvise these factors further, we have to focus on the policy making and thereby have a structural shift that focuses on a long term benefit over the medium term. The third article we are going to discuss is about the lessons of the Amritsar tragedy which has been lifted from the newspaper Mint and this can be potentially asked in paper 3 disaster management and uh, if you see a statistics published by the international journal of disaster risk reduction about 79 percentage of the crowd based disasters come through the stampedes in india and mainly this happens at religious gatherings and pilgrimage centers and these stampedes are caused by the surge of the individuals in a crowd and uh, just by having a perception of danger or loss of the physical space and this is due to the lack of physical infrastructure complying with the national standards and which invokes the mob behavior and increases the sense of threat Apart from the problem posed by the lack of physical infrastructure, the stampede is, uh, is a psychological trigger in which a rumor spreading among the masses or a loud noise could trigger this stampede. Uh, there are two types of stampedes which is the unidirectional stampede and a turbulent stampede. In this unidirectional stampede there can be a positive force stampede as well as a negative force stampede and in the turbulent stampede that when the two crowds merge from different directions it induces a panic to cause a stampede. This infographics uh, speaks about the crowd management strategies. If the preventive strategies are properly followed, we can considerably reduce the stampede problem and if the crowd management guidelines of NDMA is implemented in a right manner, we can also reduce the stampede problems. If you see in Saudi Arabia, the Jamarat bridge which is a multi-storied construction has a broadened bottlenecks so which can accommodate more number of pilgrims at the same site. So this model can be replicated in the Indian infrastructures also. So uh, adequate medical, communication and security resources has to be improvised to play both preventive and mitigatory roles in the crowd stampedes. 
Now the last article we are going to see is the outcome versus promises which deals about the Indo US and Russia relations that can be asked in paper 2 of IR and uh, this article has been lifted from the Hindu newspaper. Recently India and US have concluded the 2 plus 2 dialogue uh, in which major decisions have been taken in the defense and the foreign portfolios. This 2 plus 2 dialogue will be convened by US among its closest allies like Japan and Australia also. The recent 2 plus 2 dialogue between the Indo-US has paved way for the state of the art defense equipment from the US. This is a major outcome of this 2 plus 2 dialogue. In this 2 plus 2 dialogue, the India has signed the Comcasa agreement with USA which allows India to procure the specialized equipments for the encrypted communications from US. Parallelly, uh, US shows its support towards India by blocking uh, security aid to Pakistan from $150 billion to $1.5 billion. This strategic move of US uh, to name India as its major defense partner is to tackle the China's threat to US interest in the Asia Pacific region. In this instance, uh, India has balanced its foreign relationship with Russia by signing the S-400 Triumph missile. This is the best missile defense system in the world and it can be deployed against all the enemies irrespective of any other defense choices. Also, India has in its annual summit with the Russian president, they have uh, uh, signed the memorandum of understanding in the civil nuclear energy cooperation and a joint program in the field of human space flight, uh, namely the Gaganyan program. It was also Russia has promised for the regional security assistance to provide security to all countries in the Asia. This clearly shows a mutuality of interest uh, by India against uh, US and Russia. This seeks to cement the historical relationship with India. To conclude with, India needs to ponder deeply on what is in its best interests. Strategic ambivalence is not an answer to this situation, but only strategic integrity and autonomy and a mature strategic judgment are required in a world where disruption in the order of the day. Thank you.